Greetings, everyone. Well, welcome to part one of the Boxing Day Blu-ray updates. Well, more like the Boxing Week Blu-ray deals and stuff like that, because uh, Boxing Day is basically the Canadian version of uh, Black Friday. I think they have Boxing Day in the UK as well, if I remember correctly. Um, so it's not surprising we have it here in Canada as well, because Canada is based very much on... British colonists, essentially, so a lot of the uh, a lot of the same traditions and um, holidays and such carry directly over from that uh, that very very old civilization. Um, yeah, and I think we're even considered part of the monarchy. You know, we recognize the queen as the you know supreme ruler of the universe and such. But uh, yeah, so anyway, we have Boxing Day here, and Boxing Day means deals 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 everywhere on everything um not having a lot of money to throw around right now obviously because i'm setting aside money to move and such and just getting the bills paid up prior to the move i didn't have a lot to spend on stuff this year but uh at least i had more than last year which was nice so i was able to pick up a few things so i picked up a grand total of about 15 uh new blu-rays some of which were kind of upgrades from stuff I've had on DVD for a while. Others were new to me. Others were ones that I'd wanted to see for quite a while but just hadn't got around to yet. Um, others were things that people had recommended to me and I wanted to check out. So uh, I was going to split this up into three parts, but I think I might just do it as two. I don't know. We'll see how long. Excuse me. <clears throat> Just had a pile of Christmas M&Ms because you know I'm watching my weight and stuff. So yeah, uh, yeah, they're all red and green. Anyway, um, I'm thinking we might just do it as two parts. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe it'll end up being three. It depends how long I ramble about them. Um, most of these I have not watched yet. Some of them I have seen before. So some I'll have more to say about than others, I guess. Uh, yeah. So let's not waste any time. Let's get right down to it. Boxing Day Deals, Part 1, today on the Multimedia Chronicles. Welcome back. Now, it's been a couple of weeks since I picked up all this stuff, and I kind of forgot what I paid for all of them, so I actually dug out all the receipts. <laughs> so I could. I hung on to these solely for the purpose of doing these videos, just so I could see how much I paid for them, because I knew I was going to forget a bunch of them. So, okay, so let's start with. Uh, how much was this one? Let me just see here. Uh, there it is, yeah. Let's start with this one. I love these guys. Um, I loved the, the, I became a big fan of them when I first saw their work in Shaun of the Dead, and then of course that just continued on with, with Hot Fuzz, and, uh, and I've enjoyed seeing both of them individually in a variety of things in the intervening years as well. So I absolutely had to pick up their latest opus, which uh, oddly was not directed by their usual director or directorial collaborator, but I understand is also is still quite hilarious. Paul! with Simon Pegg and Nick Frost, with, of course, Seth Rogen as the voice of the alien of the title. Um, yeah, I had heard a lot of good things about this, and I, and I love these guys. I think they're absolutely hilarious, uh, some of the finest comedians working today. And uh, I have never been disappointed by one of their movies, so definitely wanted to check this out. But being a relatively new release, of course, it was a bit expensive. And uh, it's once in a while I'll plunk down full price for a blind buy, but even trusting these two comedic geniuses as much as I do, I didn't want to take the big chance that it was something I wouldn't like. I I know it's going to be. I have not watched it yet. I've been meaning to watch it the past few nights. I just got sidetracked. Well, as you noticed, cranking out tons of videos, so I haven't really been watching much other than uh, Justice League. I've been watching a lot of Justice League lately. Thanks again, Justin. It's freaking awesome, and I'm loving it. Yeah. Um... Yeah, so anyway, Paul, on sale, Boxing Week, at Best Buy, for $12.99. Not too shabby at all. And, of course, it does have the slipcover, which is quite nice. So let's just put that here. 
<coughs> and drop it on the floor. It's light as a feather because it's just light cardboard. Very nice. Uh, I quickly go over the uh, special features, bonus features. Hilarious bloopers, the evolution of Paul, Simon's silly faces, who the hell is Adam Shadowchild, feature commentary, galleries, and more. And we also have Behind the Lightning Strikes, the making of Paul, and Behind the Scenes featurettes. Uh, those two features there are Blu-ray exclusive, apparently. There is some uh, BD Live and Pocket Blue features as well, if you're one of those people that has a smartphone. I do not have a smartphone, and uh, I don't really care either, to be honest. I know some people see it as a status symbol. To me, I just see it as another toy and another way to be constantly interrupted while I'm out trying to enjoy my day. Um, I have owned precisely one cell phone in my entire life, and, um, you know, it was like one of the very first 3G phones. So here we go. We got the uh, Blu-ray here, of course and the DVD plus digital copy here. And uh, being fairly recent, I think the digital copy is still good. Yes. Oh, barely. Wow, this isn't even that old. And the digital copy expires January 27th, 2012. Well, that's great. I've got like two weeks to use that. That's, that's awesome. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Anyway, yeah, fuck cell phones. All right, so that's uh, that's Paul. Next up, uh, carrying on with the Marvel movie madness, um, there was basically one sort of glaring omission I needed to get into the collection, and I thought, well, since I just plunked down for all the other ones, I might as well get this one to fill in that one gap. Ang Lee's Hulk movie, yes. I have actually seen this before um, on DVD many moons ago, when it was still fairly new. Um, there were aspects of it I liked. I know I know this movie does have its fans, and it also has its uh, haters. It's kind of a love it or hate it thing. For me, honestly, uh, it's kind of, I'm kind of in the middle. Like, I did like some aspects of the visual style of it, like the the split screen effects and whatnot. I didn't really mind the CG of the Hulk. I mean, I just I really don't see any other way that you can do the Hulk as he appears in the comics, other than CG. You know, there's just no other way to do it and do it properly. Um, <clears throat> you know, an animatronic Hulk just would look ridiculous. It just wouldn't work as well. Because with the CG Hulk, you can have him jumping around and being more agile like the Hulk is in the comics. Uh, the main issue I think a lot of fans had of the Hulk in this one is that he's just too damn big. I mean, in the comics, I think he's about 9 feet tall. But here, he's like 20 feet tall. <laughs> and that was just way out there. But, uh, I don't know, whatever. There's, I mean, when the Hulk was running around smashing things and, like, throwing tanks and stuff, and that all was cool. And I actually kind of liked Eric Bana as Bruce Banner. I thought he did a fine performance. This was sort of my introduction to him. And, um, and I think he's a decent actor. You know, I like him. But, uh, yeah, so anyway, what we got here... Oh, I got this for 10 bucks, by the way, which is a little more than I wanted to pay for it. But I figured, you know, in the interest of filling in those last few remaining gaps in the collection, I thought, ah, what the hell, why not? And I think I got a little bit of a discount on it. Uh, yeah, with my discount, it came down to 9 bucks instead of nine ninety nine. So, you know, a little bit off, not too bad. So in terms of uh, special features, we have feature commentary with director Ang Lee. I guess it's Ong, Ong Lee. Anyway, uh, deleted scenes, evolution of the Hulk, the incredible Ang Lee. The dogfight scene, the making of Hulk, and the unique unique style of editing Hulk. Uh, a couple of Blu-ray exclusive features. You've got You Control. Go beyond the movie and customize your own high def experience. Enjoy interactive features while you're watching the movie. And picture in picture with just one cl click. Click. <laughs> Access interactive cast and crew interviews and behind the scenes footage using the picture in picture feature while you watch the movie. Yeah, the thing I like about Blu-ray picture in picture is it's genuine, like real time overlaid picture in picture. With DVD, they would fake it a lot of the time by actually just having a second video track that had the picture-in-picture -picture stuff hard-encoded into it, and it would kind of seamlessly branch between the non-picture-in-picture and the picture-in-picture -picture version. But it just basically, when you had two copies of the movie taking up space on the same disc, thus lower quality. Um, but Blu-ray doesn't fake it. It actually does it the real proper way. So you still have tons of space for the movie, and then the picture-in-picture -picture, uh, stuff doesn't take up that much space. So... Just spin this sucker around. I remember all the promotional stuff for uh, Hulk when it originally came out. They really 
marketed the hell out of it. I think I actually do have uh, like some some drink cups and stuff from it as well. I really like the marketing campaign for it because it had lots of cool images like this of just the Hulk being the Hulk and being big and green and badass. Um, the biggest issue I had with this was that you remember how I talked about the Incredible Hulk, the recent the 2008 movie, and how they borrowed most of the origin story from the t the the old TV series, the 80s the 80s TV series there. Yeah. And um, that was a version of the origin story I've always kind of, you know, forgiven because it was actually done with some class. Whereas uh, the version that they did in this was kind of a mishmash of origin stories and with some new elements added in that I didn't really care for, like the whole idea that his dad had been performing experiments on him since he was a kid and that uh, it was his uh, intentionally genetically modified DNA that, uh, that you know, gave him the ability to... Uh, absorb the gamma radiation and have that effect on him but yeah I didn't really care for that didn't really care for that so whatever anyway uh, next up we have Beowulf yeah another one that is very much love it or hate it I know a lot of people are big fans of the original and I say it like this because nobody truly knows what the actual original is there's just sort of some that have become the accepted definitive versions of the original epic poem but uh, the original original was actually for t was actually told and spread verbally so you know I guess most people consider the original to be the first time it was written down but then from there it's translated and broken telephones and yeah so essentially I look at it like this this basically has the same basic story elements as the original epic poem but what it does is it presents it in a more I don't know, exciting way. Not to say that the original epic poem isn't exciting, I'd say it isn't a great story, and there's been lots of adaptations, and a lot of comic book versions of it and such that have been very well received. Um, so, I don't know, it was just a fresh take on an old story that has been told a gazillion times over the years, and you're condemning them for that? Bottom line for me is, I thought this was an entertaining film. Uh, you know, I really enjoyed the absolutely cutting edge motion capture technology in it. Yeah, I have watched this one, by the way. This is one that I have watched. But uh, obviously, <laughs> why do I even need to tell you that? Of course, it's one I've watched. Um, yeah, they really broke a lot of ground with motion capture in this. I also like the fact that Ray Winstone played Beowulf. Ray Winstone, uh, you may recall I was talking quite a bit about uh, Robin of Sherwood a little while ago. I picked up the first season set in the summer. Uh, on the, on, on uh, Blu-ray of that. Ray Winstone played what I think is the absolute best uh, portrayal of Will Scarlet ever in the history of Robin Hood. I mean, he was just fantastic in that. Real badass. And um, he brought that same badassery to Beowulf here. I mean, this is very much sort of the alpha male kind of fantasy action story. I mean, Beowulf is just a take-no-shit kind of guy who likes to fight and fuck and, <laughs> you know, and just kind of rip the monsters a new one. But uh, I, don't know, I enjoyed it. So sue me. Uh, so special features, we got Beowulf in the volume. View Beowulf like never before with picture and picture behind the scenes information, web enabled features, and more. The volume is what they called the space that they would uh, use to film the motion capture. They would actually have the actors performing their own characters and everything and they had like facial expression things to pick up their facial expression even like electrodes to pick up their eye movements and like eye blinks and stuff like that and that's really really advanced stuff um so anyway the volume was what they called the stage area where they had all this motion capture stuff set up and uh just dozens of of infrared cameras everywhere to pick up the the movements and reflecting lights off the the beads all over them and stuff like that really cool so they have a lot of behind the scenes stuff about that uh, a Hero's Journey, The Making of Beowulf, Beasts of Burden, Designing the Creatures of Beowulf, Creating the Ultimate Beowulf, The Art of Beowulf, A Conversation excuse me, with Robert Zemeckis, Deleted Scenes, and more. Yeah, I mean, and the other thing is, this is by Robert frickin' Zemeckis, the guy who brought us back to the future, you know? I mean, this, this movie has some cred. I mean, he also did, uh, you know, Who Framed Roger Rabbit, and um, The Polar Express. And uh, Christmas Carol, which I think was one of his as well. But, uh, you know, the guy knows how to use effects effectively to tell an interesting story. And I don't think Beowulf is a failure in that at all. And I really don't get all the hate that this movie gets. 
Um, anyway, I enjoyed it very much. And uh, fuck the haters. So, there we go. It was a good, gritty, dark fantasy adventure. And, I mean, come on. It's got Crispin Glover as Grendel. <laughs> How can you go wrong there? I think it's the first time that they've actually worked together since Back to the Future. So it's good to see that they've kind of patched things up. Uh, next up, and I think this will uh, end up the end off the update for now. Um, I'll just grab one of these, actually. So we're kind of on a sci-fi type of kick here. Uh, last but most certainly not least, I don't need to say much about this because I did do a 30-minute review of it a while back. Finally upgraded to Blu-ray. Doom! Yeah, I know this is one that... You don't even need to tell me. I know this is one that a lot of you people hate passionately. Uh, I like it for what it is. If you want to get my full take on it, I'll put a link down in the description below. You can check out my epic 30-minute long review, in-depth review with notes <laughs> of what I liked and didn't like about Doom and why I liked the things that I liked. But uh, anyway, I've actually been wanting to get this on Blu-ray for a while. And... Um, you know, it was on sale for seven bucks for Boxing Week. Uh, how much did I pay for it? Yeah, seven bucks. I got it at Walmart, so no discount there. But, you know, seven bucks for the Blu ray, and it's the extended unrated edition and stuff like that. And there's the back. And uh, take a look inside. You got nice, there we go, nice Blu ray. And add for more Blu rays. How to use your remote control. How to do other stuff. Yeah, great. Anyway, yeah. So, sue me. I like Doom. <laughs> I just, I, I mean, I enjoy it basically for what it is. Just a stupid, brainless sci-fi action flick with uh, lots of over-the-top cheese. Sometimes that's what you want, you know? Not everything has to be the Citizen Kane of science fiction and video game adaptations. So, anyway... Not a bad selection to uh, kick off the bo Boxing Day uh, deals, I don't think. Got Paul, Hulk, Beowulf, and Doom. And I just realized every single one of those is a single word title. Yeah, let's keep it that way. I'm not going to add anything more to this update. Alrighty, I think we are going to do three parts because I've got tons more stuff to go through. Alrighty, so that is it for part one. So we'll see you next time for part two of the Boxing Week deals 2011 in 2012. You know what I mean. See you next time. Until then, thanks for watching, and sayonara. Greetings, everyone. Well... I do believe I have to poop. There we go. Why do I keep jiggling in my seat? I'm dancing to the music in my mind.